want to do is put it all together in a case. Um, so we're looking at a 52 year old male who presents with hematuria, um, goes to the ER, undergoes a CT urogram showing a bladder mass. He undergoes TURBT showing high grade urothelial carcinoma. He presents for a multidisciplinary care clin clinic um, and his further history includes that he's single, he has a teenage daughter, he's a non-smoker, has a history of drinking problem, and expressed a difficulty with coping with his cancer. Yeah, I think whenever we see a patient with this, you know, it is an opportunity for us to come together. Um, and the setup is usually a multidisciplinary clinic where the urologist, the radiation oncologist, um, pathology and uh, radiology are all in the same room discussing the case conference. But in addition to that, we also have other allied healthcare professionals in the room. You know, is there a need for a genetic counselor, for instance, for uh, someone young like this? Um, if there was ever any family history, uh, we also have uh, physical therapists, you know, sexual therapists, you know, because especially if cancer happens in a young person um, and truly any age, you know, uh, where there is such concerns, a lot of times, you know, the multidisciplinary clinic is a way to foster a lot of the patient's concerns. And certainly from an oncology standpoint, you know, there are things that we discuss, you know, so from a medical uh, standpoint, what is the appropriate choice of therapy? Is this patient uh, keen on undergoing you know, the standard recommendation of neoadjuvant chemotherapy followed by surgery? Most patients, when they hear about surgery that the bladder is being removed, uh, the first and initial reaction is, I don't want surgery. You know? So a lot of patients do seek for an alternative, and therefore it is very important for us to be able to present what is the data surrounding surgery versus let's say bladder preservation therapy or trimodality therapy, which is combination of maximal TURBT followed by uh, chemo radiation um, and other medical conditions that may arise if the patient is otherwise cisplatin ineligible, meaning their kidney function may be impaired, they have bad hearing loss history, or for instance, they have bad neuropathy where cisplatin use may be limiting. So a lot of those you know, factors we have to take into consideration when we see the patient, we review the pathology. Every so often we find that the pathology is not read as it should be. Um, and we may find that the uh, diagnosis may not be what we think it is. And certainly treatment changes because there are certain histologic subtypes where it may not make a lot of sense to proceed with neoadjuvant chemotherapy and upfront surgery would be the right uh, appropriate decision to make. Um, and certainly a lot of the interaction with um, a lot of the psychosocial aspects of care, and, and that is where we engage um, Dr. Lolak, you know, and of course, Lauren, and I'll have them speak to the different aspects of the patient's care. So, Dr. Lolak? Yes, no. thank you. Yeah. yeah, I think so for this patient, uh, certainly there are several points of discussion. Uh, uh, we want to explore a little more, maybe um, in a more private setting of uh, his prior history of loss or trauma, uh, either before the cancer or when he was growing up, uh, uh, because you know sometimes uh, uh, issues that are associated with cancer can trigger some of the what we call old old wounds, uh, the past uh, traumas or loss. We also want to know uh, how he coped in the past. How, was, how he was dealing with his adversity in the past. Maybe there's some strategies that he used and it was successful. Uh, so we can ask him, you know, what was helpful in the past when you were dealing with adversity? And we want to certainly explore 
the level of current support and strength uh, to see if there's something that you know, we can help uh, increase the support, uh, strengthen the support, or fill some of the gaps in the area that he doesn't have a whole lot of support. And so I want to know his goals. What are his goals? Not just about the cancer, but his function, his work, his relationships, you know, uh, things in life, so that sometimes that can inform, you know, what are the priorities in terms of his treatment. Then certainly uh, uh, with uh, his history, uh, uh, we want to screen him for possible depression and anxiety and then appropriate referrals for treatment, whether it's uh, psychosocial treatment that we touch on or including a, a medication treatment. Okay, so I think uh, Lauren. Um, and then we would also, uh, with Dr. Lolak, would likely go over the biopsychosocial spiritual assessment. Um, I also do that often in clinics with Dr. Aragon Chang. So for him, we would be looking at uh, his lifestyle in uh, in general. So that would include uh, diet and exercise. And from there, we can kind of determine are there any additional referrals that would need to be made? Does our dietitian should they also be coming in and having uh, an additional conversation, or are we uh, going to consult our exercise therapist? Uh, looking at home life, so that includes support at home, both emotional and physical, um, ability to navigate the home. Are there stairs that will be difficult uh, during therapy or uh, in after surgery? Uh, ability to cook, is there any difficulty standing and cooking or tolerating certain foods? Uh, is there any need for durable medical equipment either now or, or post-surgery or post-treatment? Uh, um, um, support systems, like Dr. Lola touched on, where are friends and family involved, work, how about spiritual support? Is there any need to um, supplement that as well, whether that's through Dr. Lolak and um, some therapy, or are we looking at adding some support groups or finding ways that they can get supported by others who understand what he's going through? Um, the spiritual, we would dive into that a little bit more. What are the spiritual beliefs um, if they if they have any? If he does, we would encourage spiritual engagement or maybe bring in our chaplain to provide additional support from there. Um, work life. Are they planning, is he planning to work through treatment? If so, what type of support does he receive? Does his uh, boss know about that or does his colleagues know about his diagnosis? Um, are they supportive to him taking some time off to go through treatment? Um, if, uh, if he needs to go on short-term disability, does he need assistance with the disability paperwork or uh, writing a letter to get some time off, et cetera? And then the financial and logistical needs, looking at his income, uh, any payment assistance needs for treatment, transportation, housing, et cetera. And then we would review uh, the resources in general. So if, if some of these didn't um, point out specific referrals that we would want to make, we would also want to go over everything that is available from groups to peer-to-peer -peer support, mind-body classes, exercise programs, and specifically talking why, why those might be helpful. Nutrition consults. If he didn't bring up a specific need for nutrition, we want to let him know that it's there anyways. Should he be interested in talking to them now or down, uh, down the line? Stress relief, case management, therapy, psychiatry, etc and making sure that he's aware of everything that's available here in our center um, at Life with Cancer, but also in our community outside of our program, as well as nationally and online, that there's lots of resources available there.